All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. Um, it's just a slow. I, I literally just scalped the, Euro, the Aussie dollar for five pips. I, that's, how, that's how slow today is. I sold it at uh, 74.05, and I covered it at 74 cents. Yeah. I, did, I, I uh, shorted it this morning before the Morning Edge, and I just covered it while we were on break. And um, that's pretty much how my day is probably going to be, is just trying to take a few pips here and there. Um, but once again, I, I need to point out that the dollar is just really, um, it's holding up very well. It is. All right, so let's go look at the euro. We're going to start there. Um, here is your, here's your euro. We, you know, trying to, re trying to make a recovery, but um, what we are capped by right now is the 106.65. Um, you know, I, I was, I was thinking that this 106.65, I still think it's going to be, you know, it's the, the potential is there to, to break. Uh, I'm hoping it does here. Let me, let me remove this. Okay. Let me remove that. Let me remove that. Let me remove that. Okay. So, you know, what I'm hoping for is that we make it up to 107. But we're going to write down the same numbers that we wrote down yesterday. Uh, 106.65, okay, 1.0665. Then, if we get lucky, 1.0710, right? Or 705. I forget what it was. Seven. There's uh, the low is 708. So yeah, let's just say 710. All right. So I'm hoping that's where we're going. You know, I hope we go. We I hope we go up there. I'm going to draw it again just because, you know, it's, we hope, but it's okay to hope when you're trading, when you're hoping something is going to happen, it's not okay to hope that your trade is going to work out. So um, right now I'm just hoping this is going to happen because I'd like to be a seller up there. Um, but we've seen re really no help in the Euro. And, and, and if you look at what the Euro might be doing here, we could very easily be flagging too, you know what I mean? Or like doing some sort of pennant. So it's just a tight consolidation, you know, um, before a possible rollover. So again, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm hoping we get up here, not convinced that that's what's happening either. All right. Support right now, you know, obviously is uh, 105, whatever this is, 105.70. Okay. That, that's, that's major support. I mean, you know, the problem is, is there's probably a lot of people getting long the euro right now, and um, you know the risk is that 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 you know um, the risk is that people are getting long the euro dollar, putting stops below these lows, hoping that we're getting some sort of recovery. It ain't happening, and then now stops are building below these lows. That's why if we you know press into new lows, it could you know, likely trip a whole crap load of stops too. That's that's another risk. Um, let's go over to the cable. Uh, so here's the pound. Pound, you know, really has come right back up to this, you know, the, these spike highs. I mean, you notice how, here, I'll just draw another one. I mean, notice these spike highs up here, you know, just big rejections up at these prices, you know, look at them all. I mean, that 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 alone should tell you that anything in the cable that's up here, you just got to be really worried about. I don't even know what this line is, so I'm going to remove it, whatever that is. Okay, let's remove this. So, um, yeah, any move above 125, it's a, it's a short. You know, if if the cable, if we get some news today that you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what the news would be, but you know, something about you know Brexit. If we spike up to one twenty five, you got to be a seller. I mean, look look at how look at how much we get rejected up here. So I'm going to use the one twenty five level as just a an approximation. You know, that it's big resistance, and now I do think we're in a range, so um, you know, near term. Okay, so dips, uh, I betcha, 
any dip here and the cable's probably going to be bought down here. So any dip down to like 12340 is going to be bought. I'll write down 12350 just to give us a little bit of uh, leeway. But, you know, uh, trading it in, this is why I would consider this no man's land, right? So, you know, a dip down here is probably going to be bought. Right? And a rally up here probably be sold. So, while you're in no man's land, and if you're trying to get directional right where we're at, good luck. Okay? Good luck with that. Um, Dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss, bullish. Look at this thing. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a dip down to parity, but <laughs> so is everybody else, especially anybody who's short. Anybody who's short's going, all right, come on, just dip down to parity so I can just cover you. Yeah. Well, 100.55 is support, then parity. So we got parity. Okay. And uh, hold on really quick. Let me, let me double check something. Okay. The 786 is at 101.36. We're above this spike high, so the high here is 101.20, and we're not even stopping. Okay, I mean, I'm going to write down 1.0135 because you, you can write down 101.20 because that's the high here, but you have to realize there is a 786 just above it. You, you know what can happen. I'm, I'm going to not draw this out, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it with my non-permanent pen here. You know what can happen here, right? You can see something like this. Spike up, everybody gets bullish, and then it rejects right at the 35 level because no one sees that the there's a 78% retracement up here, right? You know, 78% retracement. So everybody gets all excited about new highs in the dollar Swiss, and then it just re reverses. It comes right back down. That'd be a total screw job, which, you know, um, could happen. You know, so just, you know, something like that. Boop, right up there. So I, I think you gotta, you know, be aware that there's some resistance right here at 101.35. Okay. Um, is bullish, especially while we're above parity. Let's go to the dollar yen. So there was a tsunami, small tsunami. It's like what? I, was it six centimeters or six inches? I, I, I don't know what it was, but it was a little tsunami. But there was an earthquake yesterday, a pretty big one. Um, you know, 6.9 on the Richter scale. Do they still call it a Richter scale? I don't know. But 6.9 magnitude, I think is what it was. And um, that happened, at, you know, in, in early, early, early Asia yesterday. Uh, the dollar yen came under pressure. And... Um, when it came under pressure following that tsunami yesterday, I was on, I was um, just got back from the dentist. I had to go. My 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 son, my youngest son, had a um, had a uh, uh, concert last night. You know, it's the fall concert, so they you know singing and stuff. Um, so I had to leave. But when that tsunami hit, we dropped down here to one ten fifty. Right, like right there, it said hourly, and I said, "Be careful, you know, don't chase the yen lower, because they tend to bounce back." I mean, it, you know, especially it wasn't a super big deal, and we bounced back a little bit. And but notice, I mean, you just take a step back for a moment. Notice what the dollar yen's doing. It's like the Swissy, right? It's building. You know, it's just it's. It's building strength here. You know, everybody looks at this, this chart. I mean, I do too. I look at this chart and I'm like, okay, it's got to pull back, right? It's got to pull back. Stupid things overbought. Look, so how many people are shorting it now? Just thinking, okay, we're done here. We're going we're gonna to pull back to the 200-day moving average, maybe back to this, uh, this trend line support somewhere down there. Yeah, it ain't happening. 
And the longer we sit up here, the longer we sit up at these prices, the higher the, the risk is of a continued break higher. That's it. You know, you, you, you know, you sit here trying to short the stupid thing and then you're going to end up covering it at higher prices. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping for a dip down to 109.70. I don't know if we're going to get it. I think what we've got to do, rather than kind of like the Swissy, don't 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 look at the don't look at the um, don't look at the um, you know that that high. Look at go to the left here and see where that resistance is. Like right here, it's one eleven forty five. Okay, so one eleven. 50. That's key because I can only imagine that anybody who's short the dollar yen right now, I mean, I'm just thinking because I have to think what I would do. If I shorted the dollar yen right now, which I'm not short, but if I was, you know, had the balls of, you know, let's say I was just, you know, I had this like huge conviction that the dollar yen was going to turn lower. Um, you know, the dollar yen was going to turn lower and, and there was just, you know, massive uh, massive uh, you know buying of yen coming in and I, I think that the market's going to get risk averse and you know the yen's going to whatever whatever my excuse is and I shorted the dollar yen right now my stops would be above 111.50 okay so I'm assuming that's probably where everybody else's stops are at so if we trip 111.50 we're probably going to 112 pretty quick right Probably going up to 112.10, 112.30, somewhere real fast. Okay. It's bullish. Dollar Canadian. All right. So here's the dollar Canadian. And um, what do we do here? This thing's trading super heavy. Uh, it, it is trading really, really heavy. Um, it's interesting this reaction here. You notice trend line broke, retest, right? But we also may have a little slight channel. So I sure would, don't think I would want to get too bearish right here. Um, an 88% retracement, that's too deep. Yeah, maybe if we get a dip to like 133.60. That might not be a bad place for some, for some buying. 1.3360. I'm just trying to find us something to do here at this point. Um, looks like rallies are capped on any move back up to, let's say, 134.40. Still bullish while we're above 133. No reason to be bare. Oh, I was going to short the dollar, the Aussie again. Oh, man. Look at the euro. Just... Dollar Swedish crown on your highs. Ah. Ah. Boo. <laughs> Man. 
such a wussy for covering that Aussie. It's a, when it's slow, you know, it's like you try to take five, ten pips here and there, and so when you see another ten pips go by, you're like, damn, because it's just, it's hard to make. It's hard. It's hard to even make those types of gains, and when the market's so slow. Anyway, okay, uh, let's go talk about the uh, kiwi. So here's the kiwi. Now the kiwi struggling here. Um, so yesterday we, we said, okay, we'll r rally back to 70, 75. I think 70, 70 would be a nice short. We actually made it up to 70, 83. So the, basically this area is holding, right? Um, it's not very pretty. I still think the risk of the false breakdown here is, you know, it is a risk. I would be more happy to short the Kiwi, frankly, anywhere up here at 101.40. I don't think we'll, I, I'm kind of thinking we're not going to get it. And if we do get something like this, it's going to be tonight or tomorrow. It's not going to be today. Um, but any move to 71.40. You have 70, 85, and then 7140. Still bearish. Um, I'm assuming dips to 70 are going to be very well supported. You know, you get back to the round number, and people, there's going to be buyers down there. People that, you know, if if because if you look at you look at the Kiwi and you know, look at longer term, you think about like this level of support that we have, right? Yeah, let's go like So, yeah, I'm assuming down at 70 is going to be supported pretty well. So I wouldn't. I don't think I'd want to be short on a move down to 70. Probably be a place that I'd be looking to cover if I was short. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's go take a look at the Aussie really fast. I'll get that one done. Um, actually, you know what I should do? Huh. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. All right, I'll be back in about ten minutes. When I come back, we will uh, we'll we'll finish up these again. I'm stretch trying to stretch some time. Don't go anywhere. All right, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I'm gonna welcome you all back. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Let's go over to the Aussie dollar. Um, so here's the Aussie. Now the Aussie. Um, we came up to. Um, so we came within striking distance of the previous support, which should act as current resistance. All right, that's 7420. Uh, I, that's what I was shorting it against earlier um, when we were above. We were at 7405 when I shorted it. Um, uh, any move up to 7420. I, I, I'm kind of hoping the Aussie dollar hits new highs today. Because if it does, then I'll just sell into any strength. 
Did we get? Excuse me. Um, it's bearish. We're just, you know, we're just consolidating recent losses. That's, that's all that's happening right now. Uh, support is obviously 73.10. Um, and we can probably do this. Actually, let's grab that really quick. We don't need that one for a while. Uh, anytime in the near future. That's not what I want to do. There we go. Okay. So, the 7310 is support, you know, 7420 is resistance. So, selling it above 74 cents makes sense, you know, if we can get up there. Um, all right. Dollar index. So, here's the dollar index. Uh, pullbacks have been very minimal to say the least. Um, um, 100.50, I would even give it a little deeper than that to this, uh, to this previous channel resistance, 100.30, I'm going to write down 100.30, 100.50. Those are both supports. Preferably, I'd see us. I'd like to see us pivot off the five zero right here, the dotted line. But that uh, we're, I'm at this point in time, I'm starting to think we're going to be lucky if we even get there. All right, resistance 101.50, obviously. Um, is bullish. U.S. dollar, Mexican peso. Now the peso, it's uh, I'm I'm not short anymore. Actually, I don't have any positions on right now, which is feels weird. Feel a little naked. Um, the 38% retracement still holding, and that is com that comes in at 2013. If we can get past 2013, we might actually hit 20. You know, we might dip down here. I just, uh, this still this previous support, current resistance. I mean, uh, I mean that's holding. But what I'll do is I'll just mark up this 2075 as being resistance now. So 2075 is resistance. And it's still bullish, you know, while we're above 20 or 1919 or whatever. All right, let's take a look at the US dollar Norwegian krona. So we had support written down at 852. We dipped to 850. Now, the reason why we were supported there is this, see this downsloping trend line? Well, yesterday is more at 852. Today, since it's downsloping, it loses, a, you know, probably a couple hundred pips a day. So today we dipped down to 850 and then was supported. So 850 ended up being support, 860 is resistance. Eight fifty is support, eight it's actually eight sixty one. Eight sixty one is resistance. And it is bullish. Okay. Swedish Krona. U. 
US dollar Swedish Krona dips are minimal. Now we we broke 9.22, went a little bit lower. Hmm. I'm about ready to. I was going to sell some Aussie, but I'm going to wait. Okay. Stop there for a moment. So that's a 24% retracement. Interesting. So today support is nine, nine, eighteen or nine nineteen. Okay. And if this breaks, we might actually, we might actually get a little bit further of a pullback. We might actually pull back to like nine thirteen. I'd be more interested in being a buyer down here, frankly. Um, resistance at nine twenty eight. Still very bullish. So this would be better. That's what I'd prefer to do here in the in the US dollar Swedish Krona. Not sure if we're gonna get it, but that's what I'd rather do. Um I'm looking at this Aussie, hoping we pop up to 74.20 uh, to sell it. But I'm wondering if I should sell some right now. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I'll, I'll wait. Okay, so here's your bias chart. It is finished. Now let me see if I can take some questions. Uh, uh, uh. 